Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. In this video, as you can see, I've got an A100 to the left of me. I've also got an A100 to the right of me. <laughs> Story is, this one's going to be used as a donor bike. Um, I've been looking for a new cylinder for my A100 for quite a while now because it's at its last rebore and to be honest it's rattling like good and it needs doing again but I can't rebore it anymore so I either get a new cylinder or I get it re-sleeved which both are quite pricey. Now, and also a cylinder's quite rare, there's only one come up on eBay in the last year, a decent one, and that went for 150 quid, actually no, it might be 205 quid actually, so that's, that's quite a lot. Whereas this, when it came up on eBay, I won the auction at £83. It's got a complete engine, the wheels are just down there, because it was a rolling bike before I put it in the car, but I had to take the wheels off to get it in. It's got a tank, it's got everything, this tank's slightly different than mine, so I can't just swab it over. And um, basically the running gear is there, and I've got a basically a whole load of spares if I ever need it in the future, oil pump, cylinder head, carburetor, it's all there. It's, it's a steal. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to replace my cylinder with this one's cylinder and hopefully this one hasn't been rebought. This has basically sat in a chicken shed for the last 35 years so I'm hoping in that amount of time it shouldn't have had that many rebores if any. So I'm just going to do a direct swap of the cylinder and the piston out this one and put it in. Um, one of the bonuses of that is, is this would have been run in. Now I'm hoping the internals are alright, I haven't looked in this yet. Um, there's still two stroke in the side tank and there's no fuel in the tank. So I'm hoping some of that two stroke over the years has got past the actual pump and has actually filled the casing somewhat and just kind of made it a bit oily just to preserve everything. It turns over, it's got good compression actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to whoop this head off, I'm going to show you how to do it, and then I'm going to put it on this one. But first I shall take this one's head off and cylinder and we'll go through that. So if you give us two seconds I'll get right back to you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top end of this bike apart. So I'm going to take the cylinder head off and the bow. And I'm going to also take the cylinder off, which I'll actually take off within the actual cylinder. Um, just to keep it all as one part and keep all the rings compressed, it's just easier in the long run. So I'm going to keep the same cylinder head on. Um, main reason for that is um, I've actually got this cylinder head coiled because um, it threaded itself and actually overheated. And the heli coil is actually stronger than the aluminium it's going into, so this head's staying on. So the first thing to do is always disconnect the spark plug which should be easy enough, like a saw. I'm going to leave the spark plug in the head because it's not going to really cause that much trouble being there. And we're going to take off the bolts. Um, these shouldn't be on too tight, to be honest. They should just come off like that. They're on tight enough, you know, but... Just to... Now, I'm hoping that the bottom gasket's going to stay in one piece because I don't have a gasket set. If not, I'm going to show you how to do a cornflake gasket, as I would call it. Where you get a cornflake box and make a DIY gasket out of it. Um, like I say, the thing with two strokes is they're that easy to bloody work on. It's just child's play. A kid could do this. Uh, you don't have any of the timing gear to worry about. You don't have any of the top end valve to worry about. It's basically just take the head off, take the ball off, and there you go. Uh, Water-cooled ones, a tad bit more kind of involved because you have to drain the water system because it's got a water jacket. But other than that, they're pretty much exactly the same. Um, some will have a um, exhaust valve in them, which helps with power delivery. But to be honest, that's that's comes off with the bore itself. So now that I've got that off, um, I'm just going to see if that. Oh, yep, there we go. So we don't have to worry about. I've got a rubber mallet handy just in case they get stuck. I think the main one that's going to get stuck is the old bike because it's been on there for God knows how long. Take that off, and it looks like we're running a tad bit rich. To be honest, um, if I just turn this upside down and get all the things out of it, um, if you look, oops. If you look at the plug there, it's a nice kind of biscuity brown, so it's actually running all right. However, it is a bit black, so I'm guessing if I just move the cylinder up to its top stroke, um, I'm guessing there's a bit too much oil getting in there, so I might have to adjust the oil pump slightly. Um, you can see where the ports are basically drawn in the, the fuel and air mixture, here where the lighter bits are. But to be honest, that doesn't concern me. It's just a bit of carbon, so that's spot on. So 
Next job we're going to do is uh, take this gasket off because I'll reuse this. You can reuse these copper gas gaskets quite a lot. Um, there's no harm in that. It's more the bottom one which I'm worried about. Um, this is going to need a rubber mallet, I would say. So just give it a few quick taps just to free it, which it has done along with me steering. There we go. Oh, my gasket stayed. This is this has actually got one of my cornflake gasket designs on it, so we should be all fine if that stays on where it is. I'll show you the cornflake gasket in a second, right? So what I'm going to do now is um, I don't know if you can see that, but um, I'll move the camera a bit. I'll move it down so you can actually see in in here. Just give us two seconds, just. Uh, Oh, thank you, struck it. So that's me piston. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the gudgeon pin out of uh, my side, and I'm going to basically push the the pin out, and then keep the cylinder in the bore, and then it basically just keeps everything together, and I don't have to compress the rings, and I'll do the same for the other side. And also you can see my little cornflake um, packet um, gasket there, which actually has worked quite well. Um, they're very handy. Like I say, gaskets are easy things to make. I know a lot of people hum and haw about using DIY gaskets, but they're easy enough to make. And in a in a fix, it's it's there. Um, especially on this bike, I've actually got a bit of my name cornflake packet in the side um, case, just in case I need to make a gasket. So what I need to do now is I need to get my screwdrivers to get this circuit out. Now the problem is. Now the problem is with this bit is the circlip normally goes flying across the room. Um, I need a pair of fine nose plies which I might actually have if I have them. Right, the first thing you do before you do anything is cover the crankcase up because you do not want a circlip or any nuts and bolts getting to the bottom of your case because as soon as that happens you have to either try and find it in the bottom of the case or open the case up. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to feed this tea towel around. It's alright your side because um, I'm working back here and the circlip shouldn't defy gravity and go around corners. But I have been wrong before. So I would use a pair of fine nose pliers to get the circlip out. However, my dad has got the rest of my tools up home and I don't have a pair of thin nose pliers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a screwdriver and try and tease it out, which there we go, and there's the circlip. Um, you should really use new circlips, but I'm just going to use the old ones. I might actually have a new piston kit somewhere, which uh, might have a circlip in and use. But now I've done that, what I'm going to do is, from your side, I'm going to hit the gudgeon pin out and um, basically just take the whole ball off and um, see how we go. So if you have two seconds, I'll just re-jig everything. So I'll... as you can see, I've got the cylinder off. Um, there's a few little scores here and there, which is off me last... Um, seizure I had um, but um, as you can see it's just a lot easier if you can keep the piston within the bore um, because it keeps the piston rings all intact so if you ever need to do any work to the bottom end of your engine and stuff and don't need to take the piston fully out the bore just keep it in just push it enough just so you can get your get your little drift in there to take the gudgeon pin out once the gudgeon pins out you just take the piston and the bore together and it also means you're basically keeping everything there so you know the rings are in there everything for that assembly is in one place and it just makes life a lot easier so my next job is move on to the knackered one which should be in well I say knackered one move on to the donor vehicle which should be interesting to see how that is so if you give us two seconds I shall reposition the camera again and I'll so welcome to the old one um, like I said this is a 1974 bike so it's slightly older than mine by four years but the engine, to be honest the engine design stayed the same since 1969 I think so there shouldn't be any differences in parts with this bike and mine so I've already loosened the bolts off just so that's just as it took a while to get these off and I don't think you want to see me trying to get some bolts off so I already did that, put some penetrating fluid on and Bob's your uncle Fanny's your aunt. We are go. So I haven't taken the top off this yet, so we'll just see how it sits. Um come on, there we go. Right, so it'll be interesting to see how the inside of this bore is. Because sometimes if they've had water in them, 
and um, they'll be rusty. I'm hoping, like I say, because it's got two stroke in the tank, um, hopefully some of that's actually come down and lubricated all the parts of this engine. Um, and hopefully we'll be fine. Yeah, just where's my hammer? There it is. Oh, and that, that loosened off quite well. Oh, hey, hey. oh there's a lot of dirt in here. Let me brush this off. Right. Take that off. There we go. Oh, the gasket's on the top. I'll just take that over there because I don't need that copper gasket. Take that off. Right, the top of it looks quite alright actually. Uh, no carbon build up whatsoever. Um, it's a bit mucky. And the top of it, other than a few bits of crap that dropped in just before, but we'll clean those off. Looks alright. Now the question is, is this a rebore or not? Now there's a little mark on that you'll normally find you'll have the measurement for the the size rebore on the piston. Um, if you give us a second actually, uh, I've got this new piston kit that I used, well I didn't use, um, it's got some gudgeon pins and stuff in it so I might use this to do. But um, if you look closely on the top of that head it's got a 1.5 on it, and that means that's a 1.5 milli overbore. Um, this one has a mark on it, which could be taken as a 1. However, to me, it just looks like a mark on the cylinder, because it doesn't look professionally kind of punched in, if that makes sense. Uh, but I don't think that's... Oops, I just knocked my head there. I'll just push the cylinder down and stroke a bit. Just to see how the bore is. Oh, the bar looks quite clean actually. Right, we might be actually in business here. So, what we'll do is we'll push it back up its bore. Just hopefully there's no crap got into there. But it shouldn't really matter because we're not. There we go. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly the same process as I did with my last one pull the piston up. Um, or the cylinder up with the piston and basically just get enough room in just to punch it out and um, we should be good to go and we'll swap them over and see what I'll do is I'll drag this one outside and I'll try and start with the new piston and barrel which should be good okay <laughs> The Gudgeon pin doesn't look too worn. There's a bit of running on there, as you can see with the marks, but other than that it doesn't look too bad. This is the other one, I'm trying not to get them mixed up, and as you can see it's still got the same running marks. So I think what I'll do is I'll use the same top end and the Gudgeon pin for this. That's This has been in this piston, everything's running together, so I'm going to use everything off this in the other one. So. We shall try and get it all together. So now that's off, we should just be able to pull the ball off and we shall have an inspect to see the difference between them. You can't beat the smell of old two-stroke. I've just ripped this bike apart and I'm not kidding you, it's reminding us when I did my A100. It smells exactly the same. <laughs> Stale two-stroke, it's lovely. Right, so these are the two bars. This is my old one, as in, well, the one off my bike. And this is the donor bar. Now the first thing I notice is the liner is a hell of a lot thicker on this one than it is on this one. I have got a serious feeling this hasn't been rebored. So if I just go up onto my windowsill here, I should have a set of colour, well, early as I should say. And um, we shall just check that. Uh, the battery's run out on these, but it should give us a kind of estimated value of it. So if we, let's have a look here. Oops. What's that saying? Ooh, it's saying 50. And what's mine if we just make it back? 52. <laughs> it hasn't been reboard. Hell yeah, we've got a brand new bloody bore. I'm over the moon with that. You can also tell, um, actually I haven't looked, um, if you turn it up, you can't actually see any Hohmann marks in it which you would actually need when you reboard it. Now, to be honest, it looks like there's a bit of slack in there, but we shall, we shall have a go. We shall stick it on and see what it is. Worst case scenario is, though, I buy a quarter milli overbore for this, a headlight piston, and um, rebore it, but um, we should be good. So, next stage is to get this onto that. 
So back on the tripod, right, you join me yet again at my bike, um, which is the the working one. Um, after closer inspection of the older one, um, as you can see, this is the old top end bearing, you know, the small end as you would call it, and it's covered in oil. Um, the case looks full of oil, so my feelings were correct that basically that oil in the the oil reservoir when it got left has basically just slowly seeped down over the 35 years and it's basically preserved everything in the engine which is I'm over the moon with that because it means I've got a whole engine of parts there um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm basically going to get all the top end running gear that was out of that one I'm going to put into uh, my bike and um, we shall see how it runs and like I say it's it hasn't been reboard so even if it's a bit rattly, I can get it reboard. There's no problem with that. So first thing that goes in, we'll stick the top end in. Can't forget the top end. Um, as you can see, my gasket's are already there, so we should get a nice sealing surface on that. And we're going to stick the old piston on. I'm just going to clear some of the muck off it because I don't want any of this getting into my crankcase. Better clean these exhaust threads off. It hasn't had an exhaust on for years as well, so the threads are all gunked up, so we'll need to do that when it's on. But first off, let's stick everything back together. So first thing, it'll slip. Oh, tip my hair off the piston. That's a good bit of contamination. Oh, just wiped a bit more. It's a bugger because this bike's been sitting in a blooming chicken shed for blooming donkey's goat knows how long. And it's just covered in crap. Covered in crap. More strip, to be honest, the engine will just eat up. There's no grit or anything. It's just kind of small particles of bum and sawdust and cobwebs, which, to be honest, if the engine took it in, it's not going to harm it. Just check the pistons in the right way. It should be, because I've took it off the way it went in. Ooh, stick you on there. We're all fitting. Yes, we are. Stick the conrod in. And then we need to just line it up, just rest it there, because I'll need to grab the pin. And the fun job is, I've got to go around your side and stick the circuit pin. Which, to be honest, is a bit of bad plan on my behalf, because um, that's going to be a right pain to get in. Right, let's have a look. However, I can see it from this side. There we go. Come on, goodie. Come on. Oops. Ah, good jump pins in. Right, now we need to go around your side. So I'm going to have to move the camera around to my side as we try and get the good jump pin in. And before I forget, let's cover up the ports. Let's cover up all the internals here, just so we don't drop anything into the case. Because if we do that, we are thooked. Yeah, well, that should do. Right. And what I'll do is I'll move you around this side so you don't get caught in the action of flying circlips. Right, so I'm now around this side. I'm going to stick the good jump pin in. Um, I've got all my ports nicely covered up, so if anything goes flying, it's not going to drop down in the crankcase, which I bet you many people have done before. I have done before. It's an annoying thing to happen. It's just lucky enough that I've been able to pick it out with either a magnetic, ma well, a magnet or a pair of pliers, but other than that we should be able to get this in. Should be in the optimum word there for just kind of try and grab the end of a good jump pin, twist it and stick it in. Right. right then this is where I skin my finger. Aha! Good jump pin is in. We are go. We are a go. So now we've done that is we can pull out me rag and check the gasket which should be fine and slip on the new bolt which come on why won't you go in why won't you go that's a bit weird that should just go flying on I'm coming around your side now to have a bit of inspection This should just go straight in. I'm going to tap it a few times with the hammer and see if that does anything. I think we're home. Right. 
So that's the new slash old ball on. Um, just pull it down its stroke. Yep, all good there. So now we've got the barrel on. Uh, piston goes up and down, um, which is all good. That's that's what you're meant to do. Well, this is what it's meant to do. Um, next step I'm going to do is I'm going to stick some oil inside here just to give it a bit of lubrication. Um, then stick the copper gasket on, which you can't forget. Um, this is a common thing that will get forgotten in some places. I've forgotten it before and I've had to take the head back off. But with a two-stroke, it doesn't really matter. So, like I say, I'm going to just use the same gasket that I had on before. And I'm going to stick that on now so I don't forget it. Um, because I, al I will always forget to stick that back on. Copper gasket on. And now we're going to lube it up, so I'm going to take two seconds just to find some oil and I will be straight back. Right, so I'm back and I'm going to use this Super Injector um, very old two-stroke, which is basically antique. <laughs> I actually haven't opened this yet. Um, this, um, the local bike shop gives us it because he says oh, it's, it's been here for yonks and um, no doubt... Just stick a bit in there, it's come straight out of the exhaust port. <laughs> But basically all I'm going to do is, now that's in, is just get my finger, rub it around the inside of the bore, like so, just so we've got some lubrication in there. There we go. And then just run the piston, if I just move you a bit closer to the bike, just so we can see what's happening. Just run it up and down a couple of times just to get the two stroke in and another thing I do is when it gets to the top red stroke before it actually opens the ports is stick some more in just so it sits on top of the piston like a so rub it around again rub it around the crown of the piston there we go then take it back down right and that's well and truly lubed up. Well and truly lubed up so we don't have any kind of worry about it drying or starting under a dry, well being dry when it starts I should say so there's no lubrication but we should be fine there just rub the excess oil off the exhaust and then we shall stick the cylinder head back on which is that one there. It's mad when you've got too many parts. <laughs> right so that's the cylinder head it goes up this way. Hey, hey, just clip that. There we go. As we can see, nice shiny thing, nice old thing, but um, once we get this all done, I'll clean this up. Um, it's actually easier to clean up on the bike because it's um, protecting the inside. So let's get all this on and um, I say torque it up, um, I don't actually have a, well I've got a torque wrench in the garage actually, but I never use it. Um, my dad's kind of taught us taught us just to do it by feel and um, I've kind of got the hang of it now um, doing it by feel Ooh. and that's the only way I ever actually tighten things unless it's major and these two stroke heads aren't the vast things um, like all things when you tighten them do it so with, with some of the heads or anything of that matter which has got a lot of heat changes um, always kind of talk them up in a store pattern and I've just realised I've got bent fin Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I'll have to live with that. <laughs> I think I think I can live with that. Um, it's either that or no piston cylinder at all. Yeah, so stick the stick the nuts back on, and then we should be good for a test fire. Which I'll have to rearrange the conservatory first, so the missus doesn't come in and shout at me for totally messing up the conservatory and the kitchen. But I'm washing the bed sheets, so. Um, I've done one thing on my chore list. <laughs> I, c I would try and put this on the chore list, but you know it's fine well, me fixing my bikes is not a chore. This is quite fun and therapeutic for me, actually. Um, as no doubt most just out there feel the same way. And that's, yeah, just the way it is. That is just the way it is. <laughs> right, and the last one, which is always going to be the one that's not going to play ball. Come on. Not very much room in here. There we go. Right. There's all the heads on. Where is that's that? Right, and we'll just tighten yous up. Yeah again in a star pattern. So there's that one up. Just hand tight to start with. 
just to talk everything down nicely. And once that's all done, hopefully we'll be good to go. There we go. Grab me little tea bar and just tighten the rest up and just go around yet again in a cross shape and just kind of tighten them all up evenly. You'll find as you tighten some will loosen off, some won't. But God, I must have cleaned my cylinder quite well. Right, so that's that there. Now just for the last go around to torque them. That one. You'll normally find as well, when you first start it up and it gets hot for the first time, all these will loosen off again, which is normal for this. As your bike, just put you around there just so I can get in here. It is quite vital that you do torque because obviously sealing the crankcase is major in a two stroke because all the fuel air uh, mixture is in, in there. Oops, just knocked the camera there. Actually, I'll move you around there. There we go, that's easier. So, one on. last one. Should be all talked. Yeah, the kind of know how much talks on it by doing that. Right, now to fit the exhaust, which should be fun, because the threads on this are right pain in the arse to match up. And being an old boat, I'm guessing they're covered in crap. You go the other way, please. Thank you. Is that on? Because you can cross thread these very, very, very easily. But I think this is going to be one of the biggest problems. Let's try and get this back on. It's quite a bad design, this exhaust bloody flange, actually. Find where. Tell you what, I'm going to have a bit of a wrestle with this and I'll get back to you once I'm finished. Right. Attempt number one. Right. Switch fuel up. Please work. Ignition's on. 